Good afternoon. My name's Angie Lee Lancaster and I'm the Portfolio Manager of Pearson Australia for Mathematics Prep to Year 12. And I'd like to take you through our Pearson Queensland Senior Math Series this afternoon. As you can see on the pictures here, our offering includes a student book and an e-book for Year 11 and 12, General Maths, Mathematical Methods, Specialist Maths, and then we have this brand new component, an exam preparation workbook, which will be available for year 12. And I'll speak a lot more about that as the presentation goes on. So what we have here is the six points that I'll be covering in our slide today. And there'll be a little bit of time for questions if we're not running over time at the end. And on the left here, we have the lead publisher, Daniel Hernandez. He comes with a math teaching background and an editorial background. And yes, you do have a picture of me down there and my background is actually senior maths teaching as well as working a lot in professional development with teachers across primary and secondary. So to begin with, I'd like to introduce you to our student book authors. And here they are. Three out of four of our student book authors are actually from Queensland. And we've done this on purpose to make sure that the style and approach throughout our series is something that Queensland teachers will be familiar with. So as you can see here, we have Gregory Bland, who's currently the president of QAMT, and Greg's worked with us on the Methods and Specialist series. He's currently a teacher at Toowoomba Grammar and has received an Australian Award for Teaching Excellence for his use of technology in mathematics. Then we have Dr. Peter Jenkins, who's currently teaching at Brisbane Girls Grammar School. And you can see from his credentials here, he's the head of maths of curriculum development. He's the head of maths, maths C and specialist mathematics. And as such, Peter has basically been highly involved in the specialist maths textbook. And down on the bottom right here, we have Nicola Silva. Nicola has been writing for us since 1999. She's a very experienced teacher from Somerville House and has also spent a couple of years teaching probability and statistics at QUT. Our fourth student book author is Gillian Anderson. Gillian's from Victoria and is a former head of mathematics at Lauriston Girls School. Gillian has had a lot to do with the IBRI. She brings a wealth of knowledge relating to methods and specialists, and she's also been an examination ass assessor when she's busy doing that right now. Gillian's been involved in our methods and specialist book. Alongside these four authors, we have a pool of about 20 Queensland maths teachers who've been, been working very closely with in terms of reviewing our content, answer checking, helping us develop some of the student resources. So all of these things have been put in place to make sure that this series, which has been developed for Queensland and this new syllabus, has that Queensland input from all of the teachers to ensure that familiarity I mentioned a little while ago. Now, one of the things that's come up a lot and that we've been asked out a lot about is what teacher resources do we include? So I thought I might start with that. Our teacher resources are free and no extra cost if you adopt our series. All of our resources include full solutions and we've been made sure that they're in Word so that you can adapt them to suit your circumstances. Having been a teacher myself, I know that no one else just gets it quite right the way I want it. So this way you can tweak, amend, add things and take them out to suit your situation. So just going through the list of teacher resources we've included, to make sure that you have confidence that we've covered the syllabus, we've included the two syllabus mapping grids. And what they do is they take the syllabus content and they map it to the student book table of contents and vice versa. On top of that, we've actually done an audit and compared the maths A, B and C syllabus to the incoming QCE syllabus and then used colour coding to show where the new syllabus is new, similar or different to your current syllabus. Now we're giving those away for free at the moment. If you would like a copy emailed to you, please simply contact Kim or Clint. Now in every course, you will find problem solving and modelling tasks both at Unit 3 and at Unit 1. And what we've included is not only the student task, but a really detailed sample response. The Unit 3 task at Year 12 has not been endorsed by the QCAA. We did ask them, which was a little bit cheeky, but of course they're not going to endorse any publishers problem solving and modelling tasks because they would like them all to be a little bit more varied. And then the other thing to ensure that your students are exam ready, we have included for every single chapter in our series a set of additional 15 to 30 questions, which we call question banks. 
and they are simply a Word document with questions and fully worked solutions graded to simple familiar, complex familiar and complex unfamiliar that you can use as you see fit. So you might wish to use them as a topic test or you might want to mush them together and do some cumulative revision either for an exam, a sample exam, any way that you see fit. 15 to 30 questions every chapter for you to use and the students obviously can't see those. Furthermore, to ensure readiness and to help you in the implementation, we've created unit exams at the end of every unit. So you can see here that we have one at the end of unit one and at the end of unit one and two for year 11. And for unit for year 12, we actually have an additional exam, one at the end of unit three, end of unit four, and a cumulative one for the whole year again, covering units three and four. And they will be split up into paper one and two, where for methods and specialists, paper one is tech free and paper two is tech active. And at the start of the exam, you'll see a table which breaks up the questions in terms of what the QCAA has said that across the exam we'll have 60% simple familiar, 20% complex familiar and 20% complex unfamiliar. And we've done a table for you which exactly highlights the marks and the questions that fit into each of those categories. To help you navigate all of the things that we have supplied, some of which I've covered here, we've developed a teaching program which is divided up into weekly sections and each one of those sections will cover any relevant assessment advice where we might talk to you about, oh, you might like to do this here. It covers the content to be covered from the syllabus that week, key rules and facts that you'd be covering that week. It includes an extra little feature that we'll talk about more later where we target one question in every exercise that targets a common error or misconception and we actually list that in the teaching program to make sure that you don't accidentally not assign that question or that you can have a look at it. You might want to use it as a front of class teaching opportunity. And the other thing that we actually have included which is you know by teacher request really from our other series is that every single asset that I'm sort of going to talk about today that's relevant to that week's teaching will be listed in the teaching plan with hyperlinks going directly to those assets, making it really easy for you to navigate and see what we have for each of those weekly learning opportunities. And just to cover here, even though this last one is for students and teachers, we have fully worked solutions for every single question in the student book and they're available for teachers and students. This series, one of the things that we've really focused on is two underpinning themes. One is meet the requirements of the QCE syllabus, including support for internal and external assessments, and we've just covered some of that already. And the second theme is focusing on strengthening mathematical understanding for students. So over the past 12 months, we've spent a lot of time working with the QCAA to make sure that our notation and approaches match the way that they're intending the syllabus to be taught. So an example of this is that you're actually will be getting an updated version of the syllabus around July, August from the QCAA and we've already been in touch with them and have an early heads up on what all the key changes will be and integrated them into our student book, our year 11 student books that have gone to print. Another example is that the vector notation, you know originally everyone told us they wanted tilde notation for the vectors but when the specialist formula sheet came out we noticed that it actually had bold italic little hat and it didn't use the tilde notation. So consequentially we have updated all of our chapters year 11 and 12 to make sure that that notation matches the notation that will be used in the end of year external exams. So I think it's really, really important that they match up the familiarity of what the students see in our book and what they'll see on those exams. This is a bit of a busy slide but it offers you a summary of all of the different ways that we feel our series does meet the requirements of the QCE. Some of these I'll unpack in a little bit more detail in a moment, others I'll just cover off here. Rest assured that our authors have integrated the cognitive verbs and the language of the syllabus objectives throughout our worked examples and questions. Every single exercise and worked example is graded in a really nice clean way as either simple familiar, complex familiar or complex unfamiliar. I think this is really important to give students confidence in what they can and can't do 
remembering that 60% of the final exam will be simple familiar questions. And I think that's very confidence building for students. Our chapter reviews have been designed to approximate that proportion of questions, 60, 20, 20, that the exams will. Having said that, the chapter reviews have not been designed to be a practice exam. They will be longer than an exam would be. And it's really about the proportion of questions in the chapter review that we've mimicked here, rather than the length of doing those questions. We've also, throughout Methods and Specialists, integrated technology worked examples. And we have designated technology free questions and technology active questions, though they won't be designated. Students need to know when to use technology and when not to use it. As I covered off just a moment ago, we will be providing you with problem solving and modelling tasks, end of year or end of unit exams, additional banks of questions, syllabus audits, mapping grids and teaching programs. All of those teaching resources are free if you adopt our series and will be in Word so you can adapt them to meet your needs. So just quickly going through some of those in more detail, here's an example of a worked exam, an example of a worked example. And you can see that we've underlined the cognitive verbs. They will not be underlined in the actual student book. This is just for illustrative purposes. I think students need to recognise when those words occur and note them down themselves. The other thing that we've touched on is the simple familiar, complex familiar and complex unfamiliar questions. And you can see here how we are using the three bars to highlight the difficulty of the question. So in this instance, both the worked example in the back here and the exercise questions are simple familiar because one bar is highlighted. You can see the shading of the others. When it's two bars, that's complex familiar. When it's three bars, that's complex unfamiliar. This slide touches on technology use. In our student book, what you'll find is calculate a free icon beside questions that we feel students should be able to do by hand. This is to ensure that from the beginning of year 11, they're constantly reinforcing and practicing those by hand skills so that they will be ready for paper one methods and specialists. The other thing that we have integrated throughout the theory of our chapters is technology worked examples. So the actual examples will be sitting in the ebook but we have included this purple indicator text in the student book so that you are always aware of when there is a worked example and what it's going to show. And the last thing to highlight here are the calculators, graphing calculator models that we're actually going to support. So we have a very basic all features guidebook for these three models here, but the actual technology worked examples will only be for the Casio 50AU and the TI Inspire non-CAS not for the TI-84 as well. So the second part of this presentation is about the second theme of focusing on strengthening mathematical understanding. So here is a quick summary slide of how we believe that we do this. And to begin with, it's really important to me and Daniel that this series helps support conceptual understanding for students and isn't just something that tells you how to do it as a skills or rote, and learn, rote learning kind of activity. So throughout our theory, you will find making connection widgets, explore further activities and additional information interactives, which I'm going to show you an example of in a minute. As I mentioned before, one question in every exercise or nearly every exercise, 99%, has a targeted question to pick up on common errors and misconceptions. And then they will be unpacked further in the work solutions, which I'll show you in a minute. We have a recall section at the start of every question to help activate prior knowledge and get students' mind thinking on this topic. We have fully worked solutions for every question, making sure that students who are stuck at home have somewhere to turn and use those to help work backwards and develop their understanding of the topic. And of course, we have highlight and warning boxes throughout our theory. So this here is an example of a making connections. You can see that in the textbook, whenever there's a making connections opportunity, you will find a green box called making connections and it will then tell you exactly what you're going to find in the widget. I'm gonna go through all three widgets first and then I'll show you an example of those. The idea of the making connections is a visual display of the idea. I move some sliders and I observe what happens to help me understand the relationship. In the explore further tasks, 
the focus is not so much just on a visual engagement, but it's with the students engaging with the content. And so they will be given a Word document and the activity will centre around doing something in either Desmos as a graphing software or a spreadsheet, Excel. And they then need to actually create something, answer some questions to help unpack those ideas that they're learning in a little bit more detail. And lastly, we also have a section called additional information. Now these are only um, included in general and methods because we feel that the specialist group may have slightly different needs in their learning and that these will be best placed to support the general and methods learners. And they tend to have a video at the start that unpacks the idea being covered and then some auto-correcting questions to check that the students actually have those ideas. So just for the moment, I'm going to step out of this slide presentation and actually show you what I mean. So here is an example of a making connections. What this widget does, it connects the idea between the unit circle for sign and the sign graph. And this can be used for students independently in the ebook or for teachers as, a, you know, as you're going through the topic to display using your computer via a projector. The floor further is a Word document which takes you through what we're studying at the moment. This is standard deviation. We have a prepared Excel spreadsheet for you as well, which the students can load up from the ebook. Some of them, they create their own. Others, we have a spreadsheet already supplied. And they then work through the activity at hand and they complete the activity and they do the calculations and answer the questions, right down to going through some of, you know, so what does this mean? The other thing I would like to point out with the Explore Furthers is that we have included the answers in the actual Word documents. So we see these as a learning opportunity, not an assessment opportunity. So the idea is that the students work through these activities but if they can't do it or they're a little bit stuck, they can go and actually develop their understanding by seeing the solutions that have been provided. So they are all indicated, as I said, in that blue text in the book. The last one that I want to cover is the additional information. So as I said, many of them start with to a little the video. Area of a cylinder, the length of one of the sides of the rectangle is equal to the height of the cylinder, while the length of so you can see how that goes through and this video is then followed up by some checking questions where students can put in an answer. I'm going to put a nonsensical answer in right now to show you how it works because I can then check and see whether I've got that right. If I didn't get it right, I can just refresh and have another go. So to be clear, these are standalone activities. They do not feed into a teacher dashboard where you can see what all the students have done. They're discrete little online learning activities. So now I'm going to switch back to our presentation. So I've mentioned this a couple of times, the common errors and misconception questions. So here's an example of one of our questions in the specialist textbook looking at factorials. So you can see that part A actually just says, well, hey, which one's equivalent? But part B asks you to explain the common misconceptions or errors in the thinking if you had chosen A, B or C. And our work solutions then go into a fair bit of detail to unpack what that thinking is. So you can see here that part A highlights why D is the correct choice. And then in part B, we go through and explain exactly why parts A, B and C alternatives are not the correct choices. So a lot of this is in the work solutions for those particular questions. Here's an example of a question in a general textbook which is looking at a common keying error on a scientific calculator where the actual question, there is only one incorrect question here and the students need to locate it. And we all know that often part D is the one that they put in incorrectly and they don't realise that if they don't put it in brackets, the 800 is going to be sitting at the top and not at the bottom as highlighted in the question. So this is the focus of our common error and misconception questions, which as I said, the teaching program will let you know every time those questions are located to make sure that they're easy for you to find. So now we get to what are we doing to help you prepare your students for the external exams? 
There's a number of features that we believe we've included to enable you to do this. First of all, methods and specialist exercises will include technology-free questions. As I said, you'll have a calculator with a line through it, which indicates to students that they should be able to do that question without any type of technology. No scientific calculator, no graphing calculator. In preparation, of course, for exam paper one for the final exams. The, all the other questions can or cannot be technology active. We're not going to indicate that to the students. They need to decide for themselves where they need to use their graphing calculator. And our work solutions will also indicate things like use your technology here to solve this. The learning of how to do that, of course, will be found in our technology worked examples. Then we have a chapter summary that nicely consolidates all the key facts and summary and rules that they've learnt in that chapter. We have a chapter review that covers the entire chapter as discussed earlier in that 60-20-20 proportion of question level difficulty. Throughout our chapters then, in between the chapters, we've included what we call exam and mixed reviews. They build out throughout the student book adding to all of the chapters that have come before to help with that cumulative revision, keeping in mind that we also have the question banks to help you construct your own cumulative revision should you wish to. We've um, provided you with unit exams as outlined before. And then the last thing that I'll explain in a bit more detail now is the examination preparation workbook. So this workbook is a writing workbook for students which takes them through a five-step sequence of preparation for external exams. And you know, you may not know, but I'm actually from Victoria. And this is actually the sequence of events that we've sort of got our children to go through. I have three children, 17 to 25, and um, this has worked quite well for them as they've prepared for their exams. So what we've done is taken exam questions from other states, in particular Victoria, South Australia, Tasmania, and maybe a couple from New South Wales, and align, taken those that relate to your QC syllabus, so making sure the content is relevant. And then we've written work solutions for those, but on top of that, we've actually included any examination notes from the states, the cohort that sits at those schools, which often highlight common errors and things that those students did. And where available, we've included how well students answered that question from that cohort. We actually have a sampler for this examination handbook, a little handout, which I'll show you now. But if you'd like a copy, you can email Kim or Clint and they will be able to send that to you. So just explaining this in a little bit more detail, what the steps are is that, well, the steps are five. I'll explain that in a minute. We have question sets. All of the questions have been grouped into little question sets and they themselves has been grouped into simple, familiar, complex, familiar, complex, unfamiliar. Again, the reason being that we want to build students' confidence and we want them to understand the kind of questions which they can do so that they start feeling good about what they can do and can put into context what they can't maybe do as well. The steps that we then work through for each individual question set is initially they work through the question set and they go through on the left and they read the question but they don't do it and they say, ah, what area of maths and what rules do I need to draw on to answer this question? And they go through the entire question set and they do this all the way through for that question set. The second step is to actually do the question. So now that I've finished all my work on the left, I do the question. That's step two. Step three is that I need to look at the work solutions and correct my actual answers. So as you can see here, now I'm at the answer section of question set one, and here are the work solutions with indicative marks. And here on the left, we have the examination report for that particular question. So we can see that only 26% of that cohort actually got that question correct. And then the examiners often leave notes about what the students did well or didn't do well. So we've included that as well. So this, all of this is step three, looking at your answer and comparing it to the work solutions and the actual commentary from the examination report. I should highlight that the examination report information does vary. We've collected questions over 16 years and you 
can imagine that there is not going to be a fantastic consistency over 16 years of reports. So the information does vary and we've taken you know, what is available. Step four in the process is to actually write yourself some notes. So what have I done wrong? Oh goodness, I always make this mistake. I think this, I need to remember that. I need to remember that you know, the anti-differentiation of one on X is log blah or whatever it is so that you actually leave yourself a note for every single question where relevant. Once you've finished a whole question set, what you're encouraged to do, what the students are asked to do, this is step five, is I'm going to whiz back through to the top. We're going to go to the front of the book and what we have here is a red, amber, green section. So having completed set one, as a student and now look at my notes and pointers for each of the questions and I fill out this section, wow this is what I, I, I'm doing really well, I'm a little bit unsure about this and I really think I need to talk to my teacher or, or revise this. So as they work through the examination prep book they will keep filling this out for all of the question sets and, um, and there's more than five, there's 18 to 21 question sets in each of the books. And then a pattern is likely to emerge about the things that I'm good at and the things that I need support at. So as I said, if you'd like a copy of this handout, you're more than welcome to email one of our consultants and they will send that through to you. So moving on from our question sets, let's have a look at when will our content actually be available. I am happy to share that in term four, all of our year 11 content will be available. And if you are a school starting in Term 3, we are also able to help you with penultimate content. So basically content that is at third or almost final pages and we can then supply that to you either as a PDF or in, a, in an ebook. And if you'd like to work with us to make sure that you can access our content starting from Term 3, just reach out to Kim or Clint and they will make sure that that can happen. Anyone who is starting in Term 3, where we haven't got everything fully live as yet, is more than welcome to contact us and I can then forward on those teaching and learning resources relevant to that content ahead of time so that you don't miss out on the support material that we have. This slide goes over in a little bit more detail what we actually have available when. So you can see that for Year 11, all of our eBooks will be available from September, so towards the end of September all three will be available. Come the start of Term 4, the student book for general and specialist will definitely be available and the methods book, because we only have four authors, is running on a different schedule and so that will be available towards October, mid to end October we'll have that. Anyone who needs content, again we can supply you with PDFs as well and you can see the ebook is live already. Year 12, everything should be available around mid next year. Exam preparation books, the same. So that is the availability of the content. Now having a quick look at pricing, our pricing is as follows. If you're a digital only school and you're looking for an annual ebook reactivation, that will cost $49.95. However, another way that you might like to go about it is that we have a student book, you know, ebook bundle, and what you get for that for $85 or $84.95, you get the student book and the ebook. And then the following year, if you'd like to reactivate that ebook, you pay under $10 to reactivate that ebook. And the following year again, you pay under ten dollars to reactivate the, the yearbook, and I think that is for I'd have you'd have to talk to the sales reps, but I think that's for four years of activation. So you buy the student book, which you can then pass on to the students the following years, and then you just pay ten dollars or less to reactivate the yearbook the following years. Now each student who's had access to an yearbook gets to keep their login for two years. So just because a new cohort is using that student book and has a new activation, the student from year 11 will still have access to all of the year 11 ebooks that they've had access to while they're in year 12. And as I've pointed out here, there was a little error in our brochure which said that the ebook is only going for 15 months, but naturally it's going for two years to cover that, those two senior years of activation. In year 12, if you're looking for a bundle, we have the examination prep workbook and the student textbook and ebook priced at 
or we have the examination prep book standalone for just under $30. Now, if you have any questions or you'd like to know more information, please jot down the um, our landing page, our website, where you can find out more about our series at uh, pearson.com.au, Queensland Senior Maths. And if you have any specific questions or you'd like a copy of those syllabus audits or um, the examination handout, please either phone or email Kim and Clint and I'm sure they'll be in touch, they're quite busy. Looks like we don't have any questions, which is great. If you do find that you have some questions, um, please feel free to contact the sales consultants or um, you know, if there's a sort of maxi question, they will pass that on to me as well. Thank you very much for your attention and joining us today to find out about our series.